Hello, welcome to a demonstration on how you can handle multicollinearity in your regression model. Now, multicollinearity is a statistical phenomenon that occurs in multiple regression analysis in situations where two or more independent variables uh, in a model are highly correlated with each other. So, so in other words, uh, this would actually indicate a high degree of linear association between uh, predictor variables. Now we would actually expect some relationship between predictor and the predicted uh, variable, that is the independent variable and uh, the dependent variable. So if independent variables are actually correlated uh, between themselves, uh, then that is likely to create some credibility issues with our model and therefore it becomes unstable or unreliable in uh, using it as a basis for which you can estimate regression coefficients. So it's a very, very important uh, concept uh, in statistics that we want to make sure that we are able to manage it. So in this particular demonstration, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use SPSS uh, to kind of run the model first and see if uh, there are any opportunities for us to identify and eliminate multicollinearity in our regression model. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to get into SPSS and uh, then I'm going to import a, a data, a data set that's actually in Excel. So what I have to do here is I can go to File, Import uh, Data, it's actually in Excel, okay. And uh, the, the one that I want, uh, the Excel file here is uh, called uh, Banking Data, SPSS Activity. So I click on it and I go ahead and open it. It can take a few, a few seconds and uh, here we have it. Uh, it's actually coming through. And uh, it pretty much looks about what I'm actually looking for and I go ahead and say, okay. And uh, now it's actually uh, uploaded. But now what you're going to do here, we're going to do a little bit of uh, cleaning up because we can see that uh, the variables that I want is age, education, income, home value, wealth, and, and uh, balance. And uh, the rest are actually blank spaces. So I can go ahead and um, delete those. Gee, that's a lot of them. Uh, blank spaces for whatever reason in this particular data set um, I do have okay so I select them all so I would actually have to select them right then that way I have the ability to delete them okay let's see if I can there we go uh, edit delete right so let me select this one more time so that i can i can have them all selected and then i can get rid of them everything in between i go ahead and uh, delete there we go so now if you go up here and now my data set is pretty much clean now right and i can go to the data view and uh, you can actually see the data itself that has actually been uploaded Okay, so now that I have this data, I can go ahead and uh, generate a re multiple regression model. So I go to analyze and analyze, I go to regression and I look for linear. All right, and uh, what I want uh, here is I want to first of all run the model itself. So the dependent variable is going to be balance and uh, the rest of the variables are actually uh, right, okay, let's see here. Right, and they are all independent variables. So in other words, we were, we are trying to evaluate uh, the relationship between uh, the bank balance and uh, the age of the individual, the education, income, home value, and wealth, so that we can determine uh, the correlations uh, between them and the dependent variable, which is the bank balance. So once I've done this here, uh, usually we would go to, let's say maybe we can look up statistics and see if we can include collinearity diagnostics in there so that it's also generated.
that can actually begin to give us some idea whether there's any collinearity that may as well exist that will be generated together with the model, uh, the multiple regression model. So I can go ahead and say okay here and uh, when I do that I'm actually able to generate uh, the model summary, the analysis of variance and of course all the coefficients actually available down here. The collinearity statistics is also available there as well and um, right okay if I can get this out of the way a little bit now here I can actually begin to see if there's any multi-collinearity going on there so if I look at uh, the age uh, the high 76 anything higher than 70 or could be a problem and uh, education has um, a 91 there and then we have income is 94 and right so 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 here it's very difficult for us to determine if, the, if there's any uh, multicollinearity but anyway what we actually need to do here is just to quickly interpret the uh, regression model results so here it's actually showing us that the the strength of the relationship is actually at 97 percent and um, this particular model right is able to explain 95 percent of the variation in the bank balance right so in other words all the five independent variables put together they explain about 95 percent of the variation and of course if we to use the uh, the adjusted R square, which is the more conservative statistic that we can actually use, which is actually preferred in scientific research. So we can say we can explain 94% of the variation uh, in the data, uh, rather in the, bank, in the bank balance itself. So in other words, age, education, income, home value, and wealth can explain up to 94% of the variation in the bank balance. Right, and again here we can see that collectively they are statistically significant uh, because we can see here this value here is less than uh, 0 0.05. Now when we move over to this section here for the coefficients themselves, again we are able to see that uh, age is statistically significant and income is statistically significant and uh, wealth is statistically significant but education is not statistically significant and we can also see that uh, home value is not statistically significant so uh, education and home value are not strong predictors of the bank balance right that's interesting so now this is then this calls for us to refine our model right maybe um, there is a, a variable independent variable here or two variables is that are having multicollinearity issues which means they are highly correlated with at least other two independent variables now for us to be able to determine that the best way would be for us to run a correlation a statistic model so again we can go to analyze and while we are in analyze we can go to correlate and then under correlate we can go to uh, bivariate bivariate okay all right and uh, once we are there we can actually select all the independent variables only so we're leaving out uh, the the bank balance uh, because we know that's our reliable dependent variable so we just want to see if, uh, if there's any high correlation uh, between uh, multiple independent variables there. So again, we select that and uh, we do not need to do anything else. We can just go ahead and say, okay. All right, and uh, down here we can see the correlations. Now then we can actually begin to look at um, age and education, Looks like age does not seem to have any issues, right? The numbers are about, uh, they are small numbers, and the highest at 47%. Um, right, so maybe that is not an issue. Then we go to education. We can see education with age, 
um, education is a high correlation with uh, home value. So at least it's only one other correlation. Uh, income, uh, we have uh, income here is actually showing us that uh, it has as multiple um, high correlations there with uh, home value and wealth. Right, that's interesting. Now let's see um, what about uh, what about okay now now when when I actually look at home value 75 75 and uh, when we round this one off it's actually 70. So it looks like our real problem, uh, even though of course uh, income is uh, pretty close, uh, we really have a problem with the home value. Home value seems to be um, having some multicollinearity issues here, right? And uh, even if we go down to wealth, wealth does not seem to, even though it is a high correlation with income, uh, it stables out elsewhere. So it looks like we have a problem with the home value. So then what we can do is let's try and rerun the regression model now, excluding the home value. Okay, so let's go again to analyze and uh, we can go to uh, regression and under regression, go to linear. And here we can say we want to leave the dependent variable, the bank balance, as before, but uh, is the home value that we want to exclude. Okay, we leave everything as it was, and then we can go ahead and say, okay. All right, so now what do we have here? Right, what do we have here? Okay, I wanna make sure that we're in the right place. There we go. So this is actually the latest uh, regression model we've actually generated. Here we can see that the strength is still the same and uh, the R square, uh, so in other words, the strength is 97%, it's very strong. Um, it's a very strong uh, relationship and of course explains uh, still 95% of the variation in the bank balance and uh, when adjusted it's still at 94 percent and here we're actually looking at predictors wealth age education and income and that excludes uh, the home value so really the home value was not adding any value to this particular model and you can see that collectively is still statistically significant here but then when we go further down here now to look at the core efficiency we are actually able to see that Age is statistically significant as before. Education is now statistically significant because it's now 0 0.004, which is lower than 0 0.05. And of course, income and wealth, they are all statistically significant. So here we have it. We have actually been able to resolve the multicollinearity, thereby improving our multiple regression model by eliminating the multicollinearity that actually existed in the original model. That's basically how you can actually handle the multicollinearity in a model, thereby ending up improving uh, the credibility or the strength of the model itself. Otherwise, that's all I have for you. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this helpful. And again, uh, please be sure to like the video, um, share the video, and also comment on the video. And of course, above all, subscribe to the channel. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching and bye for now.